try something a little bit different in the workshop. A friend of mine has asked me to add a recoil system to the end of this gun stock. The little like hydraulic dampers with some springs in. It takes the force of the gun shock and dampens it so it doesn't impact your shoulder so much every time you shoot. It's sort of a softer amount of recoil felt through your shoulder. This gun stock is too short for him, he wants it longer, so he says don't machine this wood down at all, he just wants it fitting exactly on the end of this piece of wood as it sits here. So I'll take you through the process of getting that machined in place. When I've had to cut a gun stock down in the past, which I've not got to do on this one, I've um, marked how much I want to cut off it, say 10 mil or so, and I've gone round with uh, my little wheel gauge that cuts the grain. So you just set it to the depth, run around with that, cut it to the grain. Then I go on the crosscut saw and I set this cut up, like I pull the blade out and just put the cut that's already there up against the saw blade. And I use packers and pieces of timber to basically set the, the gun so it sits right and sits back against the fence and run the saw blade down on them score marks. And it's it's been successful. I've, I've put a nice sharp blade and the score mark on the underside, I get a really clean cut around the gun stock at whatever length you need to cut it down by. Sorry about the noise next door. George is uh, he's on a mission to make as much noise as possible, I think, today. The fitting of these jigs, you basically need to router out. That plate sits flat on the end of the gun stock. You need to router out a housing for this outer section here it needs to be deep enough to allow that recoil system and then rods that poke through it as it works to clear without hitting any timber so i made this little jig years ago i've fitted about six or seven of these kits now hole saw two holes with a force and a bit that's the right diameter cut between them and then i marked these little holes which are the fixing holes for the plate top and bottom if you can see them through so that they're in the right places. Then once you've got that, I've drawn um, a gun stock on. So that's uh, an old one that I've worked on before, but I know that is in roughly the right space for the gun stock. So when I've got this butt pad removed, I can place that on the end of the gun stock. Just eyeball it so it's in roughly the right space so that all this mechanism fits in quite nicely and you've got enough room to fit these screws into the wood. It's quite close on a lot of gun stocks, um, especially on this side, on the narrow, the bottom side of the stock. Um, for where that screw goes in, you don't want it to be weak and go into a very thin bit of wood. So you've got to be uh, really careful on the placement of that. And this little jig just helps to, to get it placed without having to do any guesswork. So let's get started. We'll take this original butt pad off the gun. So we've got to find out what type of screw they've used to fit that with. It's generally a Phillips 2 is a good starting point. Treat myself to a new little CXS. So the screws remain in there. It looks like we've got a uh, balancing system in here. So let's just have a look. So this is uh, Browning's uh, weight balancing system for the stock. It's just a little uh, a bolt with a load of brass weights on. And uh, you unbolt them, and if you don't want them, you just thread your bolt down until you've got your stock balanced exactly how you want it. But it threads into a little brass insert in the stock. So hopefully the stock bolt is long enough to wind in with a backing plate and it should just pull itself out of the wood. See if it works. Then we need to get the stock bolt out, which is normally a like six or an eight mil Allen key. This thing seems to have flat head screw hold it in so hopefully the longest screwdriver I've got and the biggest bit 
is man enough to do it. Because quite often the first time these come off, they're pretty well torqued up. Remove the bolt. Give the stock a gentle tap, and it should come apart. So if you ever wonder what the inside of the Browning Pro Trap looked like, that's what it is. I'm just going to wrap that up so I don't get any dust in it while it's in the workshop. And likewise, put a bit of tape to protect the gun stock. system apart. I can screw this one in. Drill down the centre of these holes. Now I can attach this jig. I remember last time I used this I thought I'll make a new one next time because this screw hole was getting very close to this cutting edge but and with that jig in place I'm just going to use one of the flush trim router bits like this I'll leave a link to the trend version of this cutter in the description these are the best ones for this type of jig they run flush with this edge and trim about um, nine and a half ten mil of material away So we go with that routed deep enough. We can take these out. And with the springs out with these two, that's the max protrusion of these rods out the back. So as long as this sits in nicely now, and they should be golden. So with it all screwed back together with the springs in place, I'm just gonna push that back into the recess I've made. Alright, so with that screwed on, we can then ascribe this back plate to the stock. So I'm just going to indent a line around the bottom of the stock into the plastic. When you're sanding this, you can't see it. Just go around with a bit of chalk. Looks nice, looks really nice. So, you've got to go around these edges with a fine sandpaper, polish them up. And then we've got to do the same sort of process with this one to fit these pads to it. So, this is the back plate attaching 
to the pad, the new pad. And then uh, finish it off linear, so you're going with the grain or with the pad down some like fine 240 grit paper. So to assemble it on the gun when you're all finished, the instructions said to use wire wool to polish the edge. I was a bit skeptical about it, but it's worked really well to polish that edge up to uh, a good enough shine. We need to put some dampening foam between these two plates. Slip it over the mechanism and it should be wide enough to do what you need it to do. And they send you with a little pen, so you can just mark accurately around that. Then we've got to cut a couple of mil in from that line so that there's enough clearance for the leather that goes around this. We'll pop that back in for a bit of rigidity. Right, so I've just reattached the stock to the gun. What a faff fit in these, I don't want to get into doing this for a living. You can always finish these screws off by hand. Just to check the tension of them. Here we go, that looks pretty decent to me. And it's got his choice of pads. And you've got a choice of pads to go on the back of the gun. Um, thin pad, I guess, is for if you're wearing a jacket or a coat. And your thick pad is for t-shirt use, so it doesn't alter the fit of the gun too much. I think what, uh, is a lanky chap, because that is a seriously long stock. Oh. 